Yo, Smelly Randy here. Today is Tuesday, March 31st. We are still in the middle of quarantine season. Uh, probably still in the beginning of it by the looks of it. Um, and we are still actually in the middle of permit season. If you are trying to get one of those hard to get hiking or backpacking permits. Uh, the reason I say that is because uh, if you haven't seen yet, um, well, let's just say this. One of the hardest things about getting some of those hard to get backpacking and hiking permits is keeping track of all of them. All of them seem to have their own websites. Um, all the dates are different. So the hardest thing for me was always keeping track of when all the permit deadlines were, when like lottery registrations open up, when they close. Um, so if you didn't know and you haven't seen yet, I actually have curated a list, uh, basically like a permit calendar on my website, outdoordetour.com, um, where I've basically got it listed by month um, as well as by, by National Park. Um, so anyway, uh, I bring that up because if we go to outdoordetour.com right there, you'll see at the bottom, permit calendar. We'll click that and then we'll scroll down. We got January, February, March. And if we see April 1st here, uh, the first thing right there is Mount Whitney reservations open for remaining dates. Uh, so what that means is uh, Mount Whitney does a permit lottery um, for both day hiking and backpacking. Uh, that lottery has already come and gone. Um, we were lucky enough to get our permit uh, to hike the John Muir Trail, so that was great. But if you are looking for both a, uh, or either a John Muir Trail JMT permit to hike northbound or Nobo, uh, or if you're just looking for a Mount Whitney permit just to day hike it or backpack it, um, all of the leftover openings that they have will re-enter their permit system tomorrow on recreation.gov. So uh, yeah, you can, if you go to my website, outdoordetour.com, hit permit calendar, uh, you can click on that. You'll see April 1st, Mount Whitney, click that link and it'll send you down to the Mount Whitney section where I have all the links where you can get to their actual uh, permit site. Also, tomorrow, unclaimed permits for enchantments returns to their reservation system at 7 a.m. Pacific time, so 10 a.m. Eastern time. So, yeah, Mount Whitney or enchantments, uh, all the leftover permits will be back in their system tomorrow morning. Uh, and then also tomorrow, um, Mount Rainier park rangers begin processing their reservation requests. So if you think you want a backpacking permit for Mount Rainier, get that in tonight, uh, and then the rangers will start processing those tomorrow morning. So, so yeah, that's uh, what's coming up tomorrow. Check that out. Again, that's outdoordetour.com, and then just click permit calendar. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I might actually apply for a Mount Rainier backpacking permit I've been wanting to do. Oh, what's it called? The Wonderland Trail. Uh, it's about 100 miles. I think it's like 98 miles, and it just um, circumvents all of Mount Rain Rainier. Just a 90 or 100-mile trail all the way around Mount Ra Rainier. So uh, I've been wanting to do that. I applied for it last year and didn't get it. Uh, so, yeah, I think I might do that as a uh, – or I might try and do that as a warm-up to the, the JMT this year. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that covers, uh, the only housekeeping things that I had. Uh, we're gonna continue on with the National Park series this week, and today I'm going to highlight, actually, the most requested National Park I got, Glacier National Park, in Montana. Let's see if I can get that to focus. All right. Oh, hey, there we go. So let's go.
All right, so if you noticed on this brochure, it actually is called Waterton Glacier. Come on, there we go. Uh, and that's because the northern part of the park uh, is the Waterton section, and that's the basically part of the park that's in Canada. So it's kind of split up half and half. Actually, I'd say most of the park is in the US, but uh, the top section there is in Canada. And the first thing we should do, or the, I should say the first thing I would do is try and get a feel for the layout of the park. So I have a general idea of what I'm working with. And to do that, let's spread this out, see if we can tape it up here. Uh, I forget where I did this yesterday. Maybe around, let's go a little bit higher. Maybe around there. Oh God. So we went to Glacier. Uh, we've been there once. That was our week long camping trip in 2018. How's that? All right, that should work. We were there for, I think, seven days, eight days, something like that. Yeah, we were there for, I think we had eight days off of work and we were there in the park exploring for uh, seven days. And I know that because uh, we hiked 77 miles in seven days. So we had an 11 mile a day average hiking. So I actually thought that this would be a harder thing for me to do and figure out where I would go if I just had one day there. But the park is so big and there's so many things to see. Oh yeah, let me just talk to you like this. Uh, that the park is so big and there's so much to see that if I had just one day, I actually wouldn't be doing any long day hikes. Uh, so figuring out what I would do in one day was actually fairly easy. So let's just get into it. Let me see, let me make sure everything I need is visible. All right, so basically everything above the screwdriver here is the uh, Canada side. The border is right here at the top of the screwdriver. Everything above that is Canada. If you do plan on doing that, you'll need to make sure you bring your passport. Uh, whether you're hiking into the Canada part or driving, you'll obviously need your passport. Um, I heard there are absolutely rangers at the border on the hiking trails that will check for that. So um, looking at the park, uh, there is basically one main road through the heart of Glacier National Park, and that is going to the Sun Road. That is this dark line right here. Goes up over some mountains, uh, and then back over here. This is the main road through the park. Uh, it typically does not open until like July, sometimes late July, just because of them clearing the snow. Uh, if you follow them, on their website or on social media, they'll always give updates every spring and summer um, on the progress of them plowing and clearing the road. So that's one thing you need to know if you're going to the if you're planning a trip to Glacier is that um, I would highly recommend planning it for a time kind of later in the summer when you know this going to the Sun Road is going to be open. That way you can see the whole park. Otherwise, you have to drive basically this uh, this highway or another highway all the way around just to get to the other side. So when we went there, um, it was, what was it? It was like the first week of August. Uh, so everything was open and we were like, great. And then two days before our trip, a wildfire started over here on the west side, right on uh, Lake McDonald. So that was a bummer and it, it ended up spreading and it ended up closing down going to the Sun Road. So that was a huge bummer. We basically had to decide which side of the park we wanted to spend our time on. We could have taken a day and driven around to the other side, but we just opted. We ended up opting to stay on the east side and knock out everything over here. Um, but yeah, assuming everything's open and it's, you know, late July, um, if I had one day in the park, I would start at the west side of the park here at Apgar Visitor Center, uh, and I would work my way east. Um, oh, and then the other thing I did tell you, Waterton is the north part. 
Um, this is Apgar Visitor Center. This is the basically the west entrance. Uh, in the middle, up on Logan Pass, is the Logan Pass Visitor Center. And then the east entrance over here is St. Mary Visitor Center. Uh, and then the other main, there's two other main parts of the park on the U.S. side. Uh, and the more popular one is Many Glacier, which is right up here. You basically have to go out the St. Mary exit up and around and then go to Many Glacier. Or just south of there is the Two Medicine section, which is right here. Um, so those are the main parts of the park. It's basically the main road, Many Glacier up here, Two Medicine down here, and then the Canada part up north. Um, so anyway, if I had one day, I would, uh, let's say 6 a.m. is sunrise to 9 p.m. sunset. Uh, I would plan on being right here in Lake McDonald uh, for sunrise uh, because basically the lake kind of faces toward the east where the sun's going to rise. You can get some great photos uh, on Lake McDonald of, if you've ever looked at pictures of Glacier, you've probably seen one's at the edge of a lake looking in at all these super colorful uh, stones and pebbles and rocks in the in the lake. You can get shots like that at Lake McDonald and pretty much every lake, but Lake McDonald is the most popular place, I would say, uh, to get shots like that. So uh, I would plan on being here for 6 a.m. sunrise. Um, then I would continue on going to the Sun Road I'd probably be here at Lake McDonald until, let's say, 7 a.m. I'd drive probably 20 minutes up past Sprague Creek. Uh, and then, let's see, where is it? Oh, right up here, Avalanche Creek. Right here I would stop and I would do my first hike of the day. Nothing crazy. It's, uh, it's called Trail of the Cedars Nature Trail. Um, it's less than a mile round trip. Um, and then after that, I would, so that's just a quick walk around some boardwalks, then continue. Let's see, where the heck is it? All right. So yeah, after that, that's just a quick walk. I would do that real quick. Then I would continue on going to the sun road, uh, up over the mountains, up to Logan Pass Visitor Center. Uh, and then I would do my second hike of the day, which would be to Hidden Lake. Uh, I wish I knew how far that was. Hidden Lake, I don't know. So yeah, that I think, I want to say that's around like, um, let's say three to four miles round trip. Uh, beautiful hike, I'd absolutely do that. Uh, I might even consider afterward getting back to the visitor center and then hiking north along the garden wall um, up toward Granite Park Chalet uh, and toward Swift Current Pass. Um, I probably, if I had one day, actually, I... all right, sorry about that. My battery died. I don't know where I'm at, so I'm just going to recap real quick. Uh, so yeah, I said 6 a.m. sunrise at Lake McDonald, be there for an hour till 7, drive up to Avalanche Creek and hike the Trail of the Cedars Nature Trail, which is 0 0.8 miles round trip, so that's a quick walk. The reason I would hike that is because it's just a different kind of, um, uh, environment. This would, doing this trail will make you feel like you're kind of walking through a rainforest, which is... I, I would say very different than any of the other uh, terrain that you are probably going to see uh, on your one day in the park. So I would definitely do that. Then let's say, so done with that by like 730 and then drive maybe a half hour to Logan Pass. So it's 8 a.m. now, maybe 830. Uh, I did look up the Hidden Lake Trail, that's 2.8 miles, so I can knock that out in an hour. Uh, let's just say be back at the car by 9.30, uh, and then probably another hour drive, no, let's say half hour drive to, the next hike I'm going to do is to St. Mary Falls and Virginia Falls, uh, and that is another, I think, 2.8 or 2.9 miles round trip. 
So that's another hour. Uh, so let's just say, hopefully you be back at the car after that hike by like 11 a.m., maybe noon. Uh, after that, um, I would drive, I'd actually head out toward the St. Mary exit. Also, I should say, you're going to make tons of stops for photos on going to the Sun Road right here. You can see how there's like a, a sharp switchback turn right up here. Um, this goes up through the mountains over here. Logan Pass is at 6,600 feet above sea level. So uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous drive. When we went there, we could only go from St. Mary to the Logan Pass Visitor Center. But we did hike along the garden wall and could see the road uh, below us. So it's an absolutely gorgeous drive. So you're going to make pl plenty of stops along the way. Um, and just so you know, from Apgar to St. Mary here, that is a one hour and 47 drive without stopping. So, uh, so yeah, just so you know that. So after the St. Mary and Virginia Falls hike right in here, we're going to drive out to St. Mary, hop on the highway, go out and around, and up to Many Glacier. That is a 45-minute drive from St. Mary to Many Glacier. Um, so let's say conservatively, I, could, I feel like I could get to Many Glacier by 1 p.m., let's say. Uh, from Many Glacier, there are so many amazing hikes out of here and they all kind of go different directions um, so there's a lot of options here uh, what we did actually if i had one day i think i would probably hike to grinnell lake um, actually if i had one day yeah i'd probably do grinnell lake either that or i would go north toward iceberg lake and Tarmigan Falls and Tarmigan Tunnel. Um, or the other great place you could go is up toward Bullhead Lake and Swift Current Pass. Uh, that's an area that we hiked. Um, we actually hiked from Logan Pass all the way up and around to Mini Glacier and then caught a shuttle back. But uh, So yeah, at Mini Glacier you have a lot of options. There's also Cracker Lake. I don't think... I would recommend doing that if you just had one day. I would do one of these other hikes. Um, the only reason I say that, Cracker Lake is an absolutely amazing spot with just insane turquoise blue water. Um, it's one of the most beautiful lakes that you'll see. But it's not, it's very different terrain It's uh, than the rest of these hikes. Uh, going back to Cracker Lake, you can see it's very much separated from all the other hikes in Mini Glacier. Uh, it's very wooded and, and narrow, and then it then it finally opens up only when you get all the way back to the lake. Um, if you do one of these other hikes, which is what I would do if I had one day, you're way more likely to see a moose, especially if you head towards Swift Current Pass and Bull Lake. Um, we saw, I think, three moose just on our hike through here, uh, and it seems like there are always moose back there. So if you want... Uh, wildlife, Bullhead Lake towards Swift Current Pass, that's probably what I would do. Um, but Grinnell, you can't go wrong if you do Grinnell Lake and Grinnell Glacier, uh, as well as Iceberg Lake and Ptarmigan Falls. Um, so yeah, you have a lot of options back there, and a lot of these hikes, uh, they're very, all the trailheads are, they basically all start right at Mini Glacier and they all just kind of go different directions. So you have a lot of options there. So yeah, after that, um, I mean, if I got to Mini Glacier by 1 p.m. and the sunset doesn't happen till like 9, 9.30, I could probably, I, I think I could easily knock out two of these hikes. Um, so yeah, that's what I would do with one day. And then uh, I'd either have a camp a campsite at Many Glacier um, and or a campsite somewhere else. I don't know. There's a lot of places to camp up there. Uh, a lot of first come first serve camps campgrounds and a lot that you can reserve in advance as well. So yeah, I think that's uh, basically what I would do with one full day. Lake McDonald, then Trail of the Cedars Nature Trail. 
Then uh, sightseeing up over Going to the Sun Road. Uh, stop at Logan Pass Visitor Center. Hike to Hidden Lake. Uh, continue down Going to the Sun Road. Hike uh, St. Mary in Virginia Falls. That's all one hike. Only three miles. I'd continue out through St. Mary. Go up to Many Glacier. And then do two of the four possible hikes up here. Um, tons of options. That doesn't even touch the two medicine section of the park, uh, which is also beautiful. We did a 16 mile loop hike right here over Pitamakan Pass. I, I'm sure I'm butchering that, but uh, yeah, over Pitamakan Pass and Dawson Pass. Um, so yeah, we did a 16 mile loop hike. That was our first hike in the park. So we did that first and then spent most of our time in here. Uh, we ended up backpacking to Cracker Lake up off of uh, Mini Glacier. Um, and then, yeah, spent all of our time basically right in here doing a ton of different hikes. So, so yeah, with one day in the park, that is what I would do. Um, again, this is in Montana. Big time grizzly country. Uh, we saw one grizzly... But that wasn't on the trail. We saw one grizzly in a in a big open field um, down by just, where was that? Somewhere, I think, just past St. Mary Lake over here uh, by Jackson Glacier Overlook. We saw one big grizz in a field. I think we saw two other black bears, one cross the road in front of us. The other one we saw during the St. Virginia, I'm sorry, the... St. Mary and Virginia Falls waterfall hike. Um, and then we saw a ton of moose up by Many Glacier. It, it, oh, and we saw actually more bears up by Many Glacier too. So yeah, tons of wildlife up there. Um, it's, it's really an amazing park. It's, I mean, if you can tell just by the one main road that goes through the park, this is like a backpacker's paradise. You can, there's all of this that is hikeable. Everything down south. Um, I had a couple backpacking routes I had planned down in Two Medicine uh, that we didn't get to do. One of the popular backpacking routes is to start basically at Lake McDonald and backpack all the way through here. Um, I think all the way out. Yeah, all the way out to uh, St. Mary Lake. So you basically are backpacking that whole section right there. Uh, Gunsight Pass, that's what it's called. So yeah, if you're looking for backpacking routes, Gunsight Pass, doing a loop like that, and then you can take the shuttles to get back to where you started originally. Um, the other long hike that we did was, I mentioned this from Logan Pass all the way to Many Glacier. If you're doing that, you just need to make sure you get to Many Glacier before the last shuttle comes to take you all the way back here. So yeah, we ended up camping at St. Mary Campground uh, the entire time of our trip, except for when we backpacked to Cracker Lake. Uh, and that actually ended up working great because really we couldn't go past the Logan Pass. And then we were in prime position to go either up to Many Glacier or down to Two Medicine. So that ended up being a perfect place for us to camp, um, considering that we couldn't do any of this. The... Uh, we actually, the last night that we were in Glacier, I had booked, I had successfully gotten a permit to camp. If you see here at Lake McDonald, there's one little tent campsite right here on the northwest side of the lake. The only way to get there is either like an eight mile hike in or have a kayak and just go straight across the lake. And we brought our inflatable kayak and we had planned on the last day of our trip not hiking at all, just uh, getting to the lake, kayaking across, and just camping on the other side, side of the lake by ourselves uh, the very last night. And unfortunately, right there where that campsite is, that's exactly where the wildfire started two days before our trip. So that was a huge bummer. Um, since we couldn't do that, I ended up uh, going to the since we were right here at the St. Mary campground where the visitor center is, 
every morning for three straight mornings, I went to the vis visitor center at like four or five a.m. and just wait. I brought coffee and a and a chair, and I just waited outside for it to open uh, to try and get a backpacking permit for Cracker Lake. Uh, and then that third morning, I finally got it. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, basically our trip to Glacier. And uh, that is what I would do if I had one full day in Glacier for the very first time. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I have no idea what park I'm going to do tomorrow. I know I had some requests for the Smokies, but I haven't been there yet. Uh, my flight to the Smokies, my flight into Charlotte was April 30th, and that actually got canceled today, uh, this morning. So I'm not sure I'm going to get to the Smokies this year, maybe in the fall. I don't know. But uh, so, yeah, I probably won't do that just because it, it'll require some research for me to figure out what I would do with one day. Um, might do Olympic National Park, might do Yosemite uh if you have any requests let me know uh and if that's it um oh uh we watched since i'll keep you updated on what media we've been consuming uh last night we watched the first two episodes of ozark love that show uh i think everyone in that's great bateman's great uh first two episodes were good so yeah we're gonna keep binging that um I don't think I have any new movies to watch, so... Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. My lunch is over. If you have any questions, let me know until... Uh, um, I, what am I trying to say? If that's it, then uh, we'll just see you tomorrow. Later!